we live and we talk about that, so I just really want to honor that yes. and recognize that you all did that. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening. I first want to thank you all for having me here tonight. Um, I appreciate it. And I know that, you know, it's never easy to talk about what the police have done to your children, your family, your loved one. And I can't say it gets any easier. But I know that I am tired and I'm ready for change and that's why I keep coming out and that's why I stay on the battlefield because it hurts me to watch it continue to occur over and over. And how many people just think that this is so common and you have to train your child up this way now so that they don't get messed with or that's not the problem. The problem is what we're facing and how so many people have turned their back to the problem and I think like, you know, we have to succumb to this and we don't. But um, Uncle Bobby brought up the feeding program so I would like to recognize my black stars in the house tonight. Um, we wouldn't have been able to feed the community had it not been for the Black Star Liner Coalition. I'll fly them to Most of you are aware of what happened to Little Kenny. He is the worst example of stop and frisk and racial profiling. On July 16th, he was stopped on the T-train by the, by the police and asked to show proof of purchase. And when he didn't, he was escorted off the train where he gave chase and he was shot 10 times in the back and made to lay on the ground for over 28 minutes to bleed out and die. He was denied medical attention. And the paramedics were right there, but the police wouldn't allow them to come into the scene. Throughout all of this, this whole year, um, Fly Benzo's life has been completely impacted because of this. Um, when he started standing up and speaking out about what the police did to Kenny on that day, that's when they really started targeting him, taking him to jail incarcerating him for speaking out about the truth. <coughs> and I'm proud of him. <laughs> and those, I mean, well, that's what we need out here with us, helping us with this moment because it's a lot of us mothers. And I'll tell you firsthand, we don't know what to do. We turn into everybody else for help to find out what to do and how to do it. You know, I never even imagined that this would be my life. You couldn't have told me a year ago before this happened that I would be out here fighting for justice. I was one of those mothers who never imagined that I would bury my teenage son. I'd like to thank Oscar Grant's family, my family, because since I've been in America, And without all of us building this, this village, nothing will ever change. We have to continue to stay out here. We have to continue to find ways to affect their economic uh, system. Um, we have to continue to stand and not bow down, yes. no matter what the storm <laughs> is, no matter how much we don't feel like it, no matter how much they say we're going to go to jail and we can't do it, but we keep showing them differently. We keep proving them wrong. I also like to thank Labor Black and, Labor Black and Brown because you guys So I'm just really grateful. Um, it's been, the fight hasn't even started. We've just broke surface. I'm speaking on Kenny's case, but 
as far as all the other movements, we, we got to keep fighting. We have to continue to unite. Yes. Revolution. Um, so I'm just, my heart is filled because this is really hard to do to sit up here yes. the whole evening and look at your child, looking back at you, yes. and then have to turn around and communicate how you feel about this. It's not a good feeling, but it's not going to stop me from standing up. Right on. Thank you.